guys, it's Kugel again with another ROM review and uh, this time I've got the Moki version Marshmallow for the OnePlus 3, so stay tuned for that. So guys, the Moki ROM uh, requires no introduction, at least for me. Uh, I have been using the Moki ROM for almost all my phones, whichever ones I have held. So this is a very familiar ROM for me and one of the best features I like about this. I'll talk about that later, but it's unlike any other ROM. So let's get started. Now, first of all, this is a normal Marshmallow uh, lock screen and all that stuff. This is a special launcher, which is basically Moki launcher. So you do have that. So that's really, really nice. Uh, let's go to the settings menu and see. Now, this is basically a Chinese ROM. So you are going to have a lot of Chinese characters. The weather app is calibrated for locations in China. So there are, there's going to be a lot of stuff there and uh, of, the, of those sorts. Uh, let's go to the about phone page in the about phone page you can see this is the one plus three which is a3003 this is moki version 60.1 which is basically marshmallow release and this is a release version not the nightly there is also a nightly version which releases every day or every uh, two or three days which depends on the day of the uh, the day of the week so yeah there is that available this is marshmallow this is this does have the latest uh, security patches apart from the august one which hasn't released yet this has the moki kernel which is basically a modified as slightly modified version of the cyanogen mod kernel now this is cyanogen mod based rom so you are going to have all the bugs all the uh, miss happenings with the OnePlus 3 phone which is available in any other cyanogen mod roms let's get to the other stuff now this being a basic cyanogen mod rom you are going to have a lot of settings which are they carried over from cyanogen mod rom so let's get started on that first of all let's get the gripes, gripes out of the way uh bluetooth works i have used this with my bluetooth headphone and that works disabling the sim card the second sim card uh does not cause this thing to just vanish it just shows a uh, empty signal bar which is something unfortunate I, I would have liked that to be gone altogether like in the oxygen os rom so yeah just that nfc is working i have used nfc and that does work emergency broadcast is still there which i would have liked gone because this is more more or less a spamming service rather than anything else so yeah now in the sound settings you do have the basic cyanogen mode settings so you do have ring volume all of that you can link the notification volume to the ringtone uh, ringtone volume can be adjusted separately sim1 ringtone sim2 ringtone all of that launch music application if you have the headphone connected other sounds include dial pad all these things charging sounds can be enabled a vibratory intensity can be connected uh, changed so that is something really nice without having to have a custom kernel so that's really nice also vibrate for call enable that if you for having a better intensity so yeah it does have live display which is better for your eyes if you're going to read in the uh, dimly lit situation so just keep it in auto i normally keep it off because it gives off a different a yellowish tone at night which i really don't like you can also calibrate the colors as you want so that is also available there reduce power consumption also is available which uh, it varies i particularly don't see any effect of that in the power consumption department so but it's still there ambient display is available so that is working i really like that uh, double tap to wake double tap to sleep prevent accidental wake up a new feature available in uh, oxygen os 3.2.2 is also there uh, wake on plug wallpaper can be changed expanded desktop as i said lcd density can be changed to any of these values i normally select 400 because that's something which i am comfortable with uh, font size is right now on the large side and this is a slider rather than just three levels so you can fine tune everything Thing, so that's really nice search bar in the recent menu is available battery light can be customized and also notification light menu can be customized and this is something which i really appreciate is that choose colors automatically it will select the notification color like if you have a gmail notification the default color is white or red because the icon is white and red if you have a whatsapp message it's going to be green because the default icon is green and i really like that it does work out brightness level of the notification light can also be customized so i'm changing the brightness level so you can also change that so that's pretty nice you can also have uh, custom values so you can just have uh, anything different like red and all that for the custom uh, for the notification light so that's really nice to see so yeah that's much is in, in the uh display and light and themes this is something which i really really appreciate i prefer cyanogen mod theme engine to uh layers or the newer substratum because 
all the substratum themes are paid. The layers option is quite a bit complicated, even substratum, because I have gotten into a lot of boot loops and I, I, I presume a lot of people are going to have my way of thinking that if they want to theme their phone as hassle-free as possible. So Sanjan or Theme Engine, this is really awesome. I'm right now using H2OS theme because I like it. It's a very, very uh, light theme and I really like that uh, you can actually theme every aspect of the theme as you would like to have theme pack all that can be customized so that's really nice to see notification in the notification you have the usual baby of options which is available with science and more you can also change the heads up notification you can disable that at all if you don't want that uh, lock screen options you do have um, the lock screen for pin or fingerprint sensor all that is set up now something which i noticed with this rom is that the quick lock option is enabled if you select pin uh, option and uh, you have no way to disable the quick uh, unless you go for expose modules now there has been quite a lot of times like two or three times when i selected a pin option and when the phone restarts the i would enter my pin code but it wouldn't accept the pin and that required me to go into the team with uh, the recovery manager and recovery file manager and delete the passkey from there that is not how it's supposed to be with even with fingerprint enabled when the phone restarts you do need to enter the pin code once so that is something which is really really detrimental and that's the main reason i'm not using this as my daily driver so point taken uh, i think that needs to be addressed somehow i didn't have this issue with cyanogen other cyanogen mod based roms but this one i did have that two or three times i did have that once uh with other i think i believe aicp rom but this one I really really don't want this to be like that so yeah just for you know in the buttons option you do have a, a option to change all the button bindings long press action double tap action all that can be changed even keyboard cursor control and play playback control can be uh, controlled by the uh, volume rocker so pretty nice to see additional buttons the slider does work so that is a boon for most people so that's really nice gesture option is available and it does work so yeah ambient display you do have a few extra settings like pick up and uh, enable hand wave and pocket mode all of that can be enabled from here so that's really nice to see battery now battery life has not been the best for me with this rom it behaves as any other cyanogen mod or stock based rom but the latest oxygen os 3.2.2 gave me a very very good battery life very stable standby time so i actually liked that better so having a better option this doesn't go as much as that but this is as a yes you would like to have in any other cyanogen mod rom so yeah and also dash charging is enabled so you do have dash charging so that is really nice to see so pretty nice security option uh, all these small features which you would see in any other rom so nothing special in there status bar option you do have status bar options where you can enable disable these status bar icons whichever appears in the status bar also clock styles can be left right center whatever you need it to be network speed can be enabled or disabled so pretty nice to see that battery style can be icon ported icon landscape all that can is available to be changed battery percentage can be inside the icon next to the icon all that is available show notification count uh, quick note quick pull down is available you can also enable this super zoo icon now something about the super zoo in this rom is that uh when you uh in when you install this rom or flash the rom when you get in the rom super zoo is not enabled you have to go to developer option and enable the super zoo uh, super zoo for apps and adb uh by manually even then i was not able to get titanium backup running so i had to flash the super su script and um, get it to work i disabled super super user and enabled super su so i'm not entirely sure if that is a uh, cyanogen mod uh, error because i was able to get uh, titanium backup to function in other cyanogen mod based roms so i'm not sure if that's a a known bug but it might be so yeah just a heads up for you guys it also shows the uh, headset icon if you need that so pretty nice to see it does have a developer option where you can enable uh, root access but really didn't work out for me um, the adb option can be enabled uh, selectable application all of these are available which is basically the same stuff which i would see in any other roms uh, something which i really like is the window animation scale is a slider and you can select exactly how fast and uh, how much of a scale you need in your animation so that's really nice in the moki center application you do have a lot of options and i so one of the best feature about this rom is that it operates it is available with incremental updates 
I am a huge fan of incremental updates because I don't live in a place where internet is free or internet is very cheap that I can uh, can afford to just give in 400 megs and just download stuff or the internet is fast enough for 400 megs to be installed or downloaded in one or two minutes it takes half a day for me to download 400 megs of the ROM incremental updates reduces that to about 60 megs and I can just live with that right now so that is really really nice to see uh, if you're using something like um, uh, a nightly version that would be really really cool the only thing is that you have to donate uh, Chinese yen I guess 30 30 Chinese yen to have incremental updates enabled by default which you will download and just uh, flash it on the go uh, I have not gotten that installed but you can just go to their website and download the incremental update which is about 60 megs per uh, update so that's not a huge lot of stuff so yeah I really really like that this is the probably the only ROM right now available which gives incremental updates so I'm really really proud of that so yeah rest of everything is just as similar as you would expect out of any other ROM right now I have installed the Oxygen OS theme so you are going to see all the theme options other than that it's a standard uh, lollipop material OS so nothing special there it does it does have the cyanogen mod uh, tile customizer so nothing special about that you can uh, enlarge delarge uh, show notification slider show weather show weather also in here so pretty nice to see that uh, edit tiles you do have a lot of extra tiles here and uh, it includes compass and uh, caffeine all of this stuff which I am very very useful I really use that a lot of times so pretty nice to see a lot of options here so yeah so yeah that much is it about this stuff which you get with the ROM uh, it does have ages which is basically a customizer or kernel control application which has which gives you a lot of options which is uh, grant permi auto run permission for all these applications if you if they ask for it wake clock blocker uh, warden which is background services whichever uh, uh, just cancel out applications which are uh, running in the background hibernate each application which is basically like reunify pacifier is broadcast send broadcast or stop and link application so all of these are available on the phone uh, on the ROM uh, with this application called Aegis which is pretty nice apart from that it does come with audio effects which is pretty nice to, for you if you are into music I normally use flash wiper for Android normally when I have use any ROM for daily driving so other than that most of the stuff is uh, what I use as my daily driver so yeah it does come with U browser which is basically a browser for normal stuff so that much is it uh, now the camera the camera is basically what you would expect out of any other cyanogen mode camera nothing special it's not as good as the oxygen os camera which you would find uh, is a very well detailed camera now something which i noticed in uh, a lot of cyanogen mod roms is that the um, camera uh, is not um, camera restarts the stock camera from cyanogen mod and the gallery application causes a restart in the phone that's basically because my phone does not have f2fs enabled and sanj mod is an f2fs ready rom so uh, if i change to f2fs i can have that uh, sorted out or i can just go to build.prop and uh, delete the key which says f2fs true uh, i will be making a different video for that so you, if you guys have not uh, do not know how to make how to do that um, just let me know in the comment section so that uh, I can just help you guys out uh, anyway about the about the other stuff in the ROM and to the benchmarks I'm not going to get it through with the end to the benchmarks again but still and to the benchmarks gave me a decent score as you can see is 14700 which is basically same as any other cyanogen mode rom this is on the higher side uh, with multiple runs i got an average of about 40 for uh, 1 lakh 40 5,000 46 thousands so that is a pretty respectable score I don't have any grudge against that so yeah pretty nice to see so now let me show you guys the boot animation which is pretty rad so here is the Moki OS uh, that is that stands for Moki open source boot animation which is pretty <laughs> it's pretty unique and uh, it's really nice so I guess that much is it about the Moki ROM all in all, this is a very good daily driver if you are used to Cyanogen mod. And for me, the theme engine is just unbelievably unavoidable. I really, really like the theme engine in Cyanogen mod and and the incremental updates. That is what sells me on this ROM. So, yeah, just for you guys to know. I guess that much is it about the ROM. Hope you guys like the video. Please share, subscribe, and like the video if you found it useful. See you guys next time.
Bye.